Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Seriously, though, no, you can't. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're taking a look at the leader of War World with the DC Multiverse Mongol Mega Fig. Starting off with the packaging, and Mongol comes in a mega size Mega Fig box. Name and logo down here. On the side, we can see this is listed as Superman Villains. I searched both Google and Amazon and didn't find any specific book called Superman Villains, so I don't know why this warrants a colon and a trademark. I mean, Superman getting a trademark, yes. Either way, down here's the barcode for those who want it. Note that unlike some of the Mega Figs we've looked at, there is no way associated with it. On the back we get some comic style key art. Pay close attention to that face because we'll definitely be talking about it in the next category. As for this category, the leader of War World gets one whole point. Moving on to presentation, a Mongol stands at a very Harry Potter-esque nine and three quarters inches. Mongol was created by none other than Jim Starlin, the creator of Thanos. In fact, Starlin has said that he intended Mongol to be an homage to him. This Mongol is a melange of different looks from over the years, most notably DC Rebirth. We can see that in all the gear around his shoulders, the belt, and the overall color scheme. I say overall because sometimes he's depicted as being blue and purple, but sometimes not. Sometimes he's depicted as being yellow, and other times not. Sometimes he has a squished face with a really heavy brow, and uh, you guessed it, sometimes not. In terms of painted detail, it was nice of them to attempt to make it look like this totally not an arc reactor is glowing, but honestly I could have done without the white dot. I do like this bit of extra blue in there, as well as the extra shadowing in his eyes and teeth. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make the cutest smoky eye using makeup you can find at the drugstore. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe. Turning him sideways, we can get a better look at his helmet and gear. More of that from the back. Not every version of Mongol from the comics is sleeveless, but I do appreciate the texture of his skin. And speaking of attention to detail, he only has four digits. Looking a bit closer at the belt, and I'm really impressed with all the fine detail. It's so crisp, you could almost swear you could start hinging the different pieces. There's a bit of McFarlaneization in the panel lines and texturing, but nothing overbearing. A little more of that running down the sides of the pants. And then moving all the way down, here we have his boots. More metal paneling. A little bit of extra detail in the back, but nothing underneath but legal and peg holes. Instead of taking one specific Mongol design and running with it, McFarlane's created a kind of hodgepodge. The anatomy and proportions are very solid. And since it's unlikely that McFarlane's ever going to give us another Mongol, at least this leader of War World has a little something for everyone. For a presentation, I'm giving Mongol. Mongol, one whole point. Moving on to posability, and as is often the case with Mega Figs, Mongol is not as articulated as his smaller counterparts. For on the top, and the head is on a dumbbell joint. Because of all this back here, he can't really look up, and when you try to push his head down, it does get caught on this lip. Just push the head back, and you've got no problem. Doing that, and he can look down this far. Moving on down, his arms can raise 90 degrees. No rotator cuff, but it does kind of float around in there. No bicep swivel, but he does have single jointed swivel elbows, which sadly only bend about 40 five degrees. If you swivel the arms, they are cut a bit deeper there, but I can't exactly say it looks natural. Yikes. Also, as is often the case with Mega Figs, he has swivel hinge wrists instead of McFarlane style wrist balls. Can't really raise up too much because of the gauntlets, but hinging down is fine. Moving over to the middle, and he doesn't have any torso articulation, and I'm a bit conflicted on it. Unpopular opinion, but I actually prefer a good sculpt over great articulation, so I don't mind not seeing this cut up with a big ugly diaphragm joint. Fortunately, he does have a dumbbell waist. Mongol can arch back this far and hunch forward this far. Probably about as good as he would have gotten with a diaphragm joint anyway. That said, he does get a really great amount of tilt and twist. Below the belt, and he does have the typical McFarlane hips. They can kick this high and do a near perfect split. Very nice amount of twist at the hip, the crunchiest of double jointed knees, toe articulation, and McFarlane ankle balls that can swivel, 
hinge, and pivot. Mongol is hardly the most articulated DC Multiverse figure, but he is pretty consistent with other megafigs. Unfortunately, I don't exactly mean that as a compliment. While the lack of a diaphragm joint is no doubt frustrating to some collectors, it's the lack of range in his arms that really hurts him. I'm only speculating, but I imagine it's probably more of a budgeting issue than an engineering one. Even so, for posability, I'm giving Mongol half a point. Moving on to playability, a Mongol comes with a trading card and a figure stand. If you want to learn more about him, pause here. Unfortunately, as is common with Megafigs, Mongol doesn't come with any other accessories. Luckily for Mongol, playability is also about how well your figure plays with others. For some 6 to 7 inch scale Superman comparisons, and here we have the 2003 2 pack version by Mattel. Here we have the DC Super Heroes version, also by Mattel, and DC Universe Classics by Mattel. Switching over to DC Direct, and here we have the Man of Steel box set version. This one's based on the art of John Byrne. Here's history of the DC Universe. I love this figure, but it's really back heavy. Shifting over to when DC Direct became DC Collectibles, and here we have the New 52, DC Icons, and DC Essentials. For a Superman surprise I've been sitting on, and here we have DC vs. Dark Horse by NECA. Moving over to McFarlane though, and here we have the DC Multiverse Action Comics 1000 Superman, Henry Cavill, DC Rebirth, The Dark Knight Returns, Page Punchers, and Angry Laser Eyes Hush. For a couple of Superman variants, and here we have Dark Knight's Death Metal, Solar Suit from the Superman and Lois comic book, and most appropriately, the Infinite Frontier World of War. For some other Superman villains, and here we have Lex Luthor, Bizarro, General Zod, and the Warhammer Necron Warrior that I use as a substitute for Metallo. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't include a couple of Green Lanterns. For those who don't know, Mongol made his debut in that comic. Here we have Essentials and DC Multiverse versions of Hal Jordan. But hey, why stop there? Here we have Essentials and Multiverse versions of Batman, Essentials and Multiverse versions of Flash, Aquaman, and since McFarlane has yet to give us a standard Wonder Woman, here we have Essentials and New 52. For some other mega figs, and here we have Sabic, Killer Croc, Bane, and Darkseid. And then for just a few other 7 in scale figures, and here we have the Masterverse Skelegod, the Mighty Thor from Marvel Select, Beta Ray Bill, and Planet Hulk. Now that would be a battle. For a roll to scale comparison, here's Mongol with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. The best thing about this Mongol is that because of his size, you can slide him into differently scaled DC displays. That said, I am a bit disappointed by his lack of accessories. In fact, there's only one that I would have wanted, and if you're a diehard DC fan, you can probably guess what it is. The Black Mercy. One of Mongol's favorite weapons, it's a plant-like fungus that gets a hold of you and gives you vivid dreams of your wildest desires so it can feed off of your bio aura. It could have very easily been done like the mini Staros and the Crime Syndicate wave. Despite that disappointment, I can't deny the versatility of this figure, and for playability, I'm giving Mongol one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Being a mega fig, Mongol retails for $39.99. Whether for Superman, Green Lantern, or the Justice League at large, Mongol is an essential DC villain. Very few figures of him have ever been made. And if you think another Mongol figure this good's coming around anytime soon, the Black Mercy must have you, cause you're dreaming. For price, I'm giving Mongol one whole point for a grand total of 4.5 out of five. This review is perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Hey, that's my line. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.